Uh, well, first of all, look, I'm grateful for the commission for having me in to speak. It's actually the first time I've done one of these, although in my short life as an MP, it's the third different version of proposals that I'm looking at. <laughs> and I think it's probably the, the best, although not perfect, <laughs> um, of those three. So the headline news is I'm not going to do a massive objection, but I do have misgivings, which I will go into. Um, and I'm not just uh, an elected official... It's the seat I grew up in, the two schools I went to, all my childhood addresses, I live there now. Um, so, you know, this is personal to me. Um, so what I want to do is um, the headings that you gave that I followed my written submission around, I will sort of take those in turn and, and develop my argument there. Thank you. Um, and, you know, your job is not an easy one. It's not a jigsaw puzzle that you're fitting 650 pieces together because that's a static 2D thing. It's a Rubik's Cube because if you move one bit, all the other bits then start jiggling around. And in my career as an MP, I've seen some controversial things. Brexit, you know, we have a war raging tragically at the moment. But this boundary review has been one of them. So I'm grateful that you've gone to 650 because the earlier versions were going to reduce to 600. So a lot of my colleagues were going to, certainly on the Conservative opposite benches, going to oppose that because they would have lost out. So good that you've gone to 650. And to be fair, that was the decision of the Commission. That was the decision of Parliament. Right, OK. And I understand that overall Labour will gain two London seats in East London. That will something. be a matter for the electors, of course. Right. Oh, sorry. On the <laughs> current... Uh, and also, we're ahead in the polls, but on the last 2019, which was an all-time nadir, or however you pronounce that word. So it's looking good for the Labour Party. But Look, the um, issue I have is the one that John Cowing also mentioned, which is Walpole Ward, because the point of this exercise is to equalise the number of constituencies everywhere. And we had the right number to begin with. Um, so we were not under or over. So I wish you'd moved everything around us, but I realise that you can't do that now. So, you know, that's why I will accept this. Uh, if it was going to the drawing board again, I would say start with us, organise everything around us. But I can see that if I start making a fuss, then everything will have to change. So, you know, in the scheme of things, I can accept this. Um, look, um, the... Hang on, what was I going to say? OK, so your headings. Let's start with the one that says continuity with existing constituencies and the level of, of adherence to local authority boundaries. It doesn't do that. We can't pretend it does that at all, can we? And I think Rule 5 of Schedule 2 of the Parliamentary Constituencies Act 1986, uh, as amended, has a general aim to generally regard preserving existing constituencies as far as possible. This doesn't do it. But it does actually mirror an earlier iteration of the seat from 1997 to 2010, the old Ealing Acton and Shepherds Bush seat. So there is precedent for this those two northern wards, Old Oak and College Park and Wormholt. And in fact, to be fair, uh, Walpole Ward was in the Ealing Southall seat before then uh, at one time as well. It has been yes. in, yeah, because Northfield's where I used to live. Yeah, I mean, again, so for years, Northfield's, you've heard the same from those people. So in a way, there is a sort of justification that those two southern central Ealing seats are together now because that was an orphan ward and I know the guidance said to not have orphan wards that stick out like a sore thumb so the two south of the Uxbridge uh, road wards go together I would suggest though and I will say that in my conclusion that the seat is renamed because just the word Southall is completely should be done under the Trade Descriptions Act I don't know if that exists anymore since when we went into the EU and now we're out of the EU but you know Southall is an outlying district bordering Uxbridge that's in Greater Middlesex. These are places with a London postcode. John is a W5 resident, I think. There's yeah. W13 in there. So that, that just seems wrong. So if you called it Southern Central Ealing and Southall, or Ealing Hanwell and Southall, because it's just insulting to, you know, people. Um, so oh, what else was I going to say? Yes, right, some issues for my casework, because I have a team at this very minute, they're beavering away with uh, people's housing inquiries, housing benefit, all those things. They don't want to be dealing with two councils. And I know officially Ealing Council's guidance is to remain coterminous uh, in the one seat. But again, there's precedent. Um, and, you know, bureaucrats can rename things. People have their local ties and affiliations. 
Um, so I think one of your headings was local ties which would be broken and inconvenienced. So that includes schools, hospitals, shops, transport routes. Um, you can make a case that this new seat does capture those. Uh, I think we all in this room went to a fair number of Save Our Hospitals demos, and that included uh, the A&Es that were then under threat in um, Central Middlesex, Hammersmith, Charing Cross. Those are not within the Ealing Central Acton constituency, but people gravitate towards them. And there is an argument also people in Walpole and Northfield, as I say, I was a Northfield resident for many years, uh, they go more to... Uh, West Middlesex, because that's sort of in Brentford and, and south of there. So you, you could make that argument. Um, you know, some schools, something like Fielding Primary, Little Ealing Primary, it's probably those two wards that are the catchment of those. Uh, my son at the moment at Twyford, a lot of H&F people who come there. Um, the, and, and we have, you know, charities like just opposite the Labour Party office in Acton, we have Acton Homeless Concern. They work with a GP who comes from W12. Um, so, you know, there are connections. The Grand Union Canal, I would say, is another uniting factor, as well as the Uxbridge Road, if we're taking that as our marker. And, you know, there is this whole old oak phenomenon on the horizon. That will be eventually, I think, 24,000 dwellings, literally a new town on what at the moment is a scrubby bit of land. I'm, if this happens, gaining, God willing, if the electorate re-elect me, <coughs> gaining a prison. And losing a theatre. I'm going to Quester's Theatre tomorrow night. Again, I would consider that super central Ealing. It's literally the other side of the road from Ealing Broadway. To me, that, that seems completely anomalous to call that Southall. I mean, maybe there is an argument for those very central wards, because Walpole itself, you can uh, say within these wards there's discrepancy. So some of it's W7. Those sort of almost Hanwell streets around West Ealing Sainsbury's, maybe that seems wrong there in a seat called Central Ealing to me in some respects. Um, so maybe some of those central Walpole seats could go, uh, uh, streets could go in an elongated Ealing Broadway. Again, that's not what we're talking about here and the ward boundaries with their new names has been done. So regretfully, that's not going to happen. I think in the same way as you could rename the... Uh, what you're calling Southall, uh, South Ealing, Hanwell and Southall or something, you could rename this new seat Ealing, Acton and uh, instead of Shepherd's Bush, Old Oak. It's the same number of syllables, the same cadence, the same number of words as the old seat that existed when it was, I think, last Andy Slaughter fought that one and won that one and it was Clive Soley before then. Um, again, if we're talking about tube lines, the central line... It's quite anomalous that a, seat, uh, a station called East Acton is in... Uh, it's previously been in the Hammersmith seat itself before. Has it, uh, yeah, it's, sorry, it is in the Hammersmith seat now. What am I saying? Yeah, it's in the borough of LBHF, and it is in the Hammersmith seat. So people there describe themselves, although they've got W12 postcode, as living in East Acton. So in a way, it makes sense to unite Acton, all the bits of Acton together. Um, Again, yeah, we've got um, District, Central, Piccadilly, all of those sort of come in the two... Actually, Piccadilly, what do we have? Yes, Hammersmith as well, Turnham Green in between, doesn't always stop there. Yeah, Crossrail in the new Elizabeth line, again, will be an integral part. Um, so the A40, again, so we're going northerly. But, you know, these things are always a bit arbitrary because I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine, Sarah, who lives in Wendell Park. She's going to a third seat, I think a Hammersmith and Chiswick seat. She had no idea about this. And I do think, potentially, the Boundary Commission could have maybe done more of an awareness-raising exercise, I don't know, like a mobile library thing, going to your town centre saying, are you aware, have you given evidence, because although we're all the cognoscenti who are in the know, we're here, I think that your average Joe does not know. And I want to read out an email at the end that um, I've had several like it, but someone who emailed me overnight said, I can't go tomorrow, can you convey these thoughts to me? So yeah, bus routes 207, 607. In fact, I was aware yesterday on the tube strike day how much myself gravitates more towards uh, sort of uh, Shepherd's Bush, because... I live in Ealing Common Ward now. 
I was previously in Northwood Ward. The last time there was a tube strike, I uh, went to Kew Bridge on the, on the bus and then took the train in. This time I took the 607 to Shepherd's Bush and then took another bus, 148. So I think people in these wards do look that way, not southwards. But as I say, yeah, I do have issues. Anyway, I should be concluding, shouldn't I? Uh, my son said to say, Cycleway 34 on the A40, Cycleway 27. I've not used either, but apparently people from both use both. So my um, recommendation would be, you know, this doesn't satisfy maximum change, but it does, given the constraints you're under and everything around, it does tick other boxes. So, you know, I suppose with a, in some sense, a heavy heart, because, you know, that southern bit, I did live there for ages. I feel sad to wave goodbye to them, but if it, if, yeah, so if you're starting from scratch, I'd like you to use this as the middle and arrange everything around. If it's this or something worse that would be more disruptive, more controversial, I'm prepared to accept this. And, and we should realise that communities and geographies are not always perfectly aligned. My late grandmother, I mean, we lost her last century, used to say she'd lived in four different countries. I think that was India, British India, East Pakistan, Bangladesh. She never moved house once. <laughs> But just people around <laughs> changed what this place she lived was called. So in time, people will get used to it. It seems a bit of a shock to the system now. I would have rather kept my former neighbours in Walpole in the seat. But, you know, if it's that or nothing, um, yeah, then I'm prepared to accept this. But with the name changes, please. So um, it is completely a misnomer to call that new seat Southall when it has... W5, striking distance of Ealing Broadway roads. You can see them there, Questus Theatre, all that stuff. Um, and there is scope for renaming it because it's not just Acton. This will be a whole new big thing. Then we'll need another redraw, but that will be for another occasion when those 26,000, 24,000 people move in. So thank you. I think that's what I had to say. Just to help you a little bit, you did say you wanted to read out an email. Ah, oh, God, so I did, yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Right. I've been trying to listen very carefully. Sorry, yes. Um, right. Unfortunately, we're out today. We cannot be there to speak to the meeting. Had we had some notice, we could have... So, again, that was someone emailing me yesterday saying, we don't like this boundary. And I'm like, well, tomorrow. And it, so the awareness raising needs doing, because nobody knew, really, unless they're... You know, you emailed me specifically. I may not have known. Please, can you convey... This is in bold type. Please can you convey our extreme concern at the possibility of Walpole Ward being moved to Ealing Southall constituency. They don't even know about the new name. They'll be even more cross when they hear it's just called Southall. Being moved to the Ealing Southall constituency instead of being in Ealing Acton constituency. Walpole is part of Central Ealing and West Ealing as an area. This is our connection. Economically, socially, culturally, we do not want to lose our excellent MP. Thank you. Um, with whom we've worked over several issues and in whom we have utmost confidence. We feel this has been sprung on us with no opportunity for consultation. I hope you can help us. I mean, I remember at the time in 1983 when we first went in with Sir George Young into Ealing Central Act and I lived in Linwood Road, which was in the old Pitts Hanger Ward. I see that name's coming back with the new wards. People were furious. They were going into a seat with the name Acton. Um, in it, because it, before that it was Ealing North, it was Harry Greenway. They got used to it in the end, but I think we must acknowledge the strength of feeling from a large number of Walpole residents, and yeah, if you start again, start with me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? Um, perhaps you could call your name into the record and then ask your point of clarification, please. Um, um, Brian Jarvis. Um, you, you, Brian, what's Brian, your opinion? Brian Jarvis. Yes, correct, but what... Oh, no, no, you, no, just, 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 just um, his name. That's no, all we need. Sorry. Um, He's just a member of the public. Yes, he is. Oh, uh, hello, speaker. Uh, <laughs> just checking. Uh, very, very quickly, you mentioned it would be helpful to have name changes. If you could just clarify for us what those suggested name changes would be, that'd be quite yes, helpful. Brian. Yes, Brian. Yes. So you. the um, the proposed seat currently by the name of Southall should be. What should we say, chaps? Um, no, no, no. It's not for a consultation. Okay. Ealing, comma, Hanwell, and Southall. Or maybe as some combination, I always think Ealing should be first. We are in the queen of the suburbs and very big London borough with a population bigger than some nation states. So that would be my preferred one for that first one. It's called Ealing Southall now, so Ealing is first now. 
And then the new seat, which I would be uh, contesting next time, hopefully, is um, Ealing, Acton and Old Oak. Thank you for that clarification. Any other matters of clarification? Yes, if you could call your name out and then make your, your point, please. Yes, John Cowan. Um, yeah, just on Warpole again, um, it's got to be a point of clarification. Hasn't it, it has. Yeah. Right, okay. right, where did it? see how the phrase is. Um, no, I would say, are you, you actually think that just putting the Ealing name in there would actually go down well with Walpole residents? Uh, I have you assessed the strength of feeling? Well, so, so I think the point of the clarification is whether you feel that would or would not enough. help. Um, I think it would ameliorate the blow because, uh, as you uh, heard from that email, they're not even aware that the seat name will change, and I think that will make them even more cross and offended. Thank you very much. I think that will go some way, but yeah, my, my dream thing would have been you kept me as I was. So I think, um, uh, with uh, a, I think yeah, first of all, thank you very much for coming on and speaking to me this morning. It may be worthwhile me just adding a couple of points, which with these hearings they come at the start of the day, so obviously that you weren't in a position to hear that. Uh, one is just to sort of uh, help everybody in the room. This is a hearing where I am obliged to listen to representations. It is not an opportunity to have any kind of debate at all. We, 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 can't, we can't facilitate that, which is why I, I was only able really to just take a point of clarification. But the other point, which you may find helpful, uh, as, a, as a, a sitting MP, is that the Commission takes as much weight to written representations as it does to oral representations, and the current consultation remains open until the 4th of April. So if there are any further points that you or any of your constituents wish to make, particularly in relation to the guide which is available on the, on the Commission's website, and the reason I point you to that is because it says very clearly within the guide the points that I can take a representation of when I'm making recommendations to the Commission on any changes to the initial proposals or otherwise, including names of constituencies. Thank you. If someone can send me the precise link we can that let you they have can that. submit, we can let you have these that. people, yeah. yeah. And also, that's a shame because there's loads of spelling mistakes in there I've seen as I've printed it out. <laughs> Never mind. Please forgive the spelling Not mistakes. I think it's when on an online form. If it was in Word, it would have auto-corrected. That's so fine. Thank you very much indeed for coming along and speaking to me this morning. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.